because it's all his energy. It all belongs to him. If I write a book or make a video or do something like that, then I have the right to say how it's utilized. Huh? I have copyright on it. Of course, we give up our exclusive right of copyright and we say it's okay for anyone to, to copy our work and you know, post it anywhere because we want people to have this knowledge. But in principle, the work belongs to us and we can decide what to do with it. Similarly, the Lord's work is everything we see in this material world and even our own self. So he gets to decide how this is utilized. That's his right. And if we try to cheat him of his right, then we're a thief. We're the rascal. And because of this, we get punished. And that's why the law of karma is there. The law of karma is inescapable. Nobody can cheat the law of karma. No. So many people try to cheat God and they think they're getting away with it, but actually nobody can get away with it. Uh, his eyes and ears are everywhere. And the, la the very last name of the thousand names of Vishnu, the Vishnu Sahasranam, is Sarva Prahnarayudaha. Sarva Prahnarayudaha means he who can use anything as a weapon. <laughs> Just like he killed Roma Harshan Sutta with a blade of grass. Pop! <laughs> Finished. <laughs> so he can use anything. He can utilize any of his energies to perform any of his purposes. In fact, it's stated in the Upanishads that the Lord's senses are transcendental because he can use any of his senses for any purposes. He can hear with his eyes. He can see with his hands. Uh, he can fight with his ears. I mean, he can do anything with any of his transcendental body. So that's the difference between spiritual energy and material energy. Material energy is limited in its transformations. Uh, but spiritual energy is completely unlimited and it simply follows the will of the Lord. So we accept his will. We accept his instructions given in the Vedic scriptures. And we try to uh, follow those instructions to the best of our ability to please him. That's the process of devotional service. And that's what our community is based on. You know, some people might wonder, well, how do you do? You're traveling all over the world and you're just living somehow or other and performing all your activities, but you don't seem to work. And what, you know, how do you, what, what do they say when you became a devotee? How are you going to exist? How are you going to survive? How are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we're all surviving on the energy of the Lord. The Lord can maintain his devotees and he does maintain his devotees. Huh? We don't have to worry about making some material arrangement for our maintenance. The Lord himself takes care of us. Try to understand this. God is real and he really is in control of everything. And if we surrender to him, he really will take care of us. This is his promise. Huh? He says this in Ramayana. When uh, Vibhishan, the brother of Ravana, comes and surrenders to Lord Rama. At first, the monkeys and bears were very skeptical. Well, who is this rascal? Maybe he's a spy for the demons. Huh? But of course, Lord Rama, he knows everyone's heart. And he knew that Vibhishan was uh, sincere. So he stated something very profound and important. He said, I am the Supreme Lord and I am in, in, in everyone's heart. And if someone sincerely surrenders unto me, I take charge of him and I protect him from that moment on. Uh, from that moment on, that means forever. As soon as we uh, surrender to the Lord, then he becomes our protector. He becomes our maintainer. He looks after us. He maintains us. He maintains everyone anyway. Try to understand. It's just that when our 
relationship with him is in a diseased condition. We can't see that he maintains us. And so we have to work so hard to make some independent living apart from his devotional service. But this is because we've come under the law of karma. We're being punished. This is our punishment, that we have to work so hard and we have our own independent business, our own independent house, our own independent this, that, the other thing. And because of this, we have to struggle so hard. It doesn't have to be that way. Huh? Just like we're saying in our 2012 videos now, you don't have to worry about 2012. If you change your consciousness from material to spiritual, then you automatically see the solution to so many problems. Huh? You don't even have to think about it. The Lord takes care of it. Huh? Of course, we don't say that in the introductory videos because people don't really believe it. But actually, that's the case. The Lord takes care of his devotees. Huh? We don't have to worry about it. I used to worry all the time. Where are we going to get money? Where is this coming from? Where is that coming from? But the more that we preached and the, the more that we expanded this mission, the more that help and resources and maintenance just seemed to drop out of the sky. And somehow or other, huh? that's our favorite phrase, <laughs> somehow or other, <laughs> we were maintained by the grace of the Lord. So this is the real meaning of divine grace. Divine grace showers the devotee with all necessities. Why? Because the Lord is pleased. And when the Lord is pleased, automatically the demigods are pleased. They're in charge of this universal manifestation. And so they shower so many benedictions on the devotees. Automatically. The devotees don't even have to do anything. They don't have to make any separate effort. They just have to make sure the Lord is pleased and then everything else flows from that. So that's our philosophy. And it's not just armchair philosophy. It's a very practical philosophy. It works every day. And we see it working all the time. It's amazing. It's a miracle. But this is our, our life. So please learn this philosophy. Read Bhagavad Gita especially. And take up this way of life. And you'll find that it works for you too. The chanting process is especially important. If you chant the holy name of the Lord, even if you're not able to follow all the rules, you chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And later on, when you become a little more advanced, you can chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And this mantra will protect you because it contains the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is the most powerful thing because it's identical in potency with the Lord himself. The Lord states this in the scriptures. He says that I have invested my holy name with all my potencies. Hmm? Is it coming along now? It's a little bit overflowing because the pasta is small. Well, that happens. I took some juice off it. So. Okay. But is it almost done? Mm, it's two more minutes. Okay. We're cooking as we're talking. Cooking is a preaching. <laughs> well, cooking is preaching. Because uh, that's another reason why we want to have a farm community, so that we can distribute prashadam. We want to be able to grow the food in a natural way on land that's oh, nice. sacred. Well, we usually that's have prashadam, right? usually have it. Offered to offered to Krishna and where there's always chanting going on and like that. And then offer the food to Krishna, to, to Krishna's deity form, and then distribute that prasadam as widely as possible. Um, when I used to water the plants, I used to chant Hare Krishna, and I felt like the, the, the mantra was going to the water and the land. And yes. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a fact. So all these methods are meant for our protection and elevation. And... When we follow them, we find that our lives go really wonderfully. That's our experience. And you can see, those of you who have been following our activities for some time, who can see how just by following these principles, then automatically we get uh, maintained and protected by the Lord. We even travel. Yeah, we get to travel. 
go to interesting places, huh? <laughs> anyway, this life of devotional service is very wonderful, and we invite you all to participate and uh, take part in it. So, now, are there any questions about Advaita Prabhu? Is it related? What did she say? Does the personality of the soul change based on the accumulated karma? Sanskar? The false personality, the false ego changes. Just like now I'm in an adult body. But, you know, 30, 40 years ago, I was in a young man's body. And my false ego was different. When I was a kid, you know, like, like Vishnu John says in that lecture, I thought 